Social Security Office. All the Social Security offices in what's called the Philadelphia region have been ordered to close. And again, just one of the many different uh, changes to our schedules today. Um, I guess we could say that most things have changed because of the effects of today's tragedy. Um, national reports are indicating that this could be considered the largest, uh, the biggest mainland attack in U.S. history. We continue our live coverage from here at the 10 News Studio, live from Skylink 10 in Somerset County, where the plane went down as part of the terroristic attacks. And now we rejoin CBS for the very latest on a national basis. He said there didn't seem to be many walking wounded in the area. What he saw primarily was bodies and, and parts of bodies. He, he didn't care to estimate how many there were. I, I asked him if he could give me some idea, and he looked at me and said, it's countless. We also spoke with Lieutenant Re Rene Diavola of Battalion 4 here in the New York City Fire Department. He's an EMT. He was the first EMT supervisor at the scene after the first airplane hit the first tower. He told us that he was working triage when the second airplane hit the second World Trade Center tower. He saw the airplane come in and, and saw it cut the building, as you have already seen on videotape, it seems almost in half when it, when it hit. He described the debris raining down on the firefighters, the paramedics, the police officers who were responding to the very first of the two plane impacts. He said, I saw the building collapse. There was debris falling all around me. And at the point that the first building came down, he said that the firefighters were trapped in a swirling mass of debris and smoke. And he described how he and other firefighters literally held hands and walked up the street to try to get to safety. As soon as he found a telephone, he told me that he called his wife to tell her that he loved her. We have spoken to a number of firemen who have, have come out of there. You have to understand, Dan, the, the difficulty down there is it's impossible to see. I'm standing just a couple of blocks away. As you see on, on your live cameras, there's a, a huge towering cloud still above lower Manhattan. And down here on the ground, people are telling us that only a couple of blocks closer in, you can't even see your hand in front of your face. It's very, very difficult to work, see, to breathe. One fireman stepped out of there and told us, the world is an evil place. I know that now. Dan? Scott Pelley in Lower Manhattan. We've just passed the 1 o'clock hour uh, in the east. A little more than four hours ago is when all of this started. Three hijacked planes crashed into major U.S. La landmarks this morning. They destroyed both of New York's 110-story tall towers, and they plunged into the Pentagon. It, this is the timeline. The South Tower of the World Trade Center was hit around 9 o'clock. Then the North Tower was hit. Air traffic in the U.S. was closed about 9.30. President Bush spoke from Florida. At that time, he's spoken since via videotape video from Louisiana. Around 10 o'clock, a plane crashed at the helicopter pad at the Pentagon, did damage, set fire to portions of the Pentagon. There have been some casualties. Any dead, we don't know. There were some injured because we saw them at the Pentagon. Then the South Tower incredibly collapsed. Uh, then the North Tower, the Twin Towers, the World Trade Center collapsed. And one pauses after you say that because you know, it's almost unbelievable. And then there was a plane crash in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. That's in the Pittsburgh area. Now, Pentagon spokesman Glenn Flood is just now quoted as saying, and I quote him directly, that there have been extensive casualties and an unknown number of fatalities at the Defense Department. That's the first time they've confirmed that they've been casualties. We go to CBS News Pentagon correspondent David Martin, our national security correspondent. David. Dan, over my shoulder you can see the uh, fire engine still trying to put out the, uh, the fire that began when the plane hit the uh, building. If you were uh, at a different location, you would be able to see that that plane cut into that building just like an ax into a birthday cake. This is the west side of the building. People who were working on the east side of the building say they had their windows blown out and they saw a fireball. This for the largest office building in the world. 
So this plane caused extensive damage. Now, eyewitnesses have uh, described a plane which uh, the FBI decided was a description of a commercial 767 airliner or a 757, which would be consistent with the report of the airliner being hijacked, the American Airlines airliner being hijacked as it was taking off from Dulles uh, bound for the West Coast. No confirmation that that is what happened. As to extensive casualties, uh, certainly anybody that was on board that plane uh, could not have survived that crash, and anybody who was in the direct path of that plane when it hit the building could not have survived. From a different perspective, you can see that floors two, three, four, and five have all collapsed in on each other. It is a site which I'm sure uh, nobody in their wildest imagination uh, thought could, they would ever see. David Martin uh, at the Pentagon, our national security correspondent. Jim Stewart, uh, one of the best reporters in America when it comes to this kind of situation, has been working this story from the very beginning in Washington. And there's new information about the early reports of a plane crashing at or near Camp David, the presidential retreat outside of Maryland. Jim? Dan, the, uh, the FBI now is, is trying to sort together what has is, what, what is actually happened here and what they still don't understand. And what they do know has happened is, of course, three separate terrorist attacks in the United States, the World Trade Center, at the Pentagon, and some event that has occurred in Pennsylvania, including that it affected a commercial airliner. Because of the proximity of that crash of the commercial airline in Pennsylvania to Camp David, there is a presumption by some in law enforcement that Camp David may have been the target of that attack. Uh, that, of course, was a hijacked commercial aircraft that we are told did not respond uh, to repeated attempts to communicate with it either by the military or the FAA. Now, other things that the government is confirming at this hour, number one, they received no warnings. They had no hint of any attack in the, against domestic targets in the United States. Number two, they have not received any claim for any of these attacks from anyone. And number three, although they have no evidence, no evidence that this is the case, they are assuming and presuming that there could be additional attacks within the United States and are reacting appropriately. Uh, to do so, they have set up command posts, we are told, in Washington, in Phoenix, and in Los Angeles. Moments ago, the Attorney General of the United States returned from out of town. He was taken by an armored car convoy to the FBI headquarters. Would you ask him, please? Excuse me, Dan, we have a little bit of uh, confusion here in our newsroom at the moment. I can uh, also say that the, uh, the, the intelligence community is now saying officially that they do believe that this has these attacks have the signature as one official put it of the al-qaeda organization that of course is the terrorist organization that is under the control of osama bin laden uh, they said that is quote our lead theory uh, dan uh, jim stewart in washington now at barksdale air force base of shreveport louisiana uh, president bush is about to come out we believe this is live, although we've been told earlier that it'd be played on videotape. Here is the president. Well, folks, it's uh, live television in a situation like this. I know you understand that mistakes happen uh, to errors to human, but to really foul up requires a computer, and we've had some computer difficulty. Uh, we're going to once again try to bring you, and we now believe, I know this is confusing, but let's face it, it's a confusing situation that the president flew from Florida, apparently to Barksdale Air Force Base outside Shreveport, Louisiana. We were told that he would appear, make a statement on videotape, then we thought it's live. Now we're going to the videotape. We're having some difficulty, but here is the president, we hope, speaking on videotape uh, from Barksdale Air Force Base in Shreveport. We're going to try again to show you the videotape of the president speaking here. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward, Eric. and freedom will be defended. Eric. 
I want to reassure the American people that full, the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. I've been in regular contact with the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the National Security Team, and my Cabinet. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens, and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested, but make no mistake, we will show the world that we will pass this test. God bless. President Bush on videotape uh, from Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. Where the president is at this moment, uh, we do not know. The president said freedom itself was attacked by a faceless coward and freedom will be defended. With us here at our CBS News World Headquarters in New York is one of the world's outstanding experts on terrorism, Jerry Howard, who's a former commissioner of the mayor's office here in New York City of emergency management. He's now a terrorist expert with Kroll Associates. Jerry Howard, thanks for being with us. Sure, Dan. A lot of talk about rage and revenge. Uh, it's being said in Washington, this quote uh, bears the signature of Osama bin Laden. What is the workaday American to think about what has happened in our country today? Well, I think the first focus uh, uh, right now has to be on the, uh, the victims and the families of this horrific event. and. Uh, on, on the, the work of the rescue workers uh, that uh, both here and in Washington. Uh, certainly our prayers go out to them. Um, and and we, uh, we've seen just a, a devastating uh, a event today. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have to recognize that this was a, a cowardly act. Uh, this was an attack on the United States. Uh, I'm sure that um, uh, the, the, the good work of the FBI in time uh, they will track down. Uh, certainly this has uh, uh, the signature of bin Laden, but uh, I think it's premature uh, uh, to uh, point fingers. I think that uh, we need to let uh, uh, the, uh, the FBI uh, do their work and um, uh, try and uh, uh, point the finger at, as time goes on. Uh, right now the focus has to be on the response here in New York and in Washington. Well, let's talk about that. What what is happening at the city, state, and federal level as we speak? Well, uh, clearly, as uh, we've heard from the mayor, uh, there's a, an enormous response. Uh, the New York City Fire Department and Police Department have mobilized uh, every uh, 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 bit of manpower. They've recalled all firefighters, police officers back to work. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of um, uh, police officers, firefighters, uh, ambulances coming from uh, around the state, from New Jersey. The governor has mobilized the National Guard to assist New York City, and um, there will be federal assets coming in, both from a law enforcement for perspective to assist the New York office of the FBI, but more importantly, to assist the response, uh, FEMA urban search and rescue teams, a collapse of this magnitude with that is still burning, um, more than likely as a result of both the, the, the jet fuel and uh, g the gas that was in the building. I've been told that there's a, uh, a gas leak in the building from the natural gas lines that feed the building. 
This could burn for quite some time, could burn for hours or even days. Uh, the, the recovery from this will take uh, months and years. A couple of questions. First of all, if we can get it up on videotape, I want to show you as well as viewers because we are additional people coming in front of their sets as the day goes along. If we can get the videotape up of the of three key events this morning, and the question is whether the collapse, this is, again, this is not a graphic, this is an actual picture of the plane coming into one of the World Trade yeah. Center towers, and then those flames shooting out the other side. Right. And then we'll follow on the videotape. This happened around 9 a.m. this morning. Right. And then not too long after that, in the 9 to 10 period, one of the towers began collapsing. We had hoped against hope it was partial collapse. Some people leaped out of the building or were forced out by the flames and the explosion. Just they would gasp on the ground. My question is, we watch this first one tower collapse. That's what you're going to see on the videotape. Right. Then another tower collapse. Uh, is this massive destruction, the World Trade Center, based on what you know, and I recognize we're dealing with so few facts, is it possible that just a plane crash could have collapsed these buildings, or would it have required the sort of prior positioning of other explosives in the building? What do you think? No, I, I, my sense is that uh, just one, the velocity of the plane and the fact that there were, you have a plane filled with fuel hitting that building uh, that burned, uh, the, the velocity of the plane uh, certainly uh, had an impact on the structure itself. And then the fact that it burned and you had that intense heat uh, probably weakened the structure as well. Uh, and I think it, uh, it was uh, simply the, uh, the planes hitting the buildings and, and causing the collapse. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, as you can see, the, the, the impact on the rescue workers, I mean, these, these people who are uh, heroes in this building that uh, have been impacted by this, the number of people that have been injured, the number of police and fire, fire officers, uh, firefighters that have been injured is just, uh, it's incalculable at this point. And the mayor said uh, within the last hour, I think, that there were indications that some people might still be alive in the debris of the building. It's oh, reasonable to accept that. Oh, it's you. you um, this early into an incident, you have to uh, assume that some people are alive. Um, and uh, I know that um, after uh, all the years I've worked with the New York City Fire Department and Police Department, they will make every effort uh, to do everything humanly possible to get in there uh, to find any potential uh, victims that might still be alive, recognizing that additional collapses of these buildings and the buildings, I'm told, uh, in the area, there's a potential for a, a collapse of another building next door. Uh, they, they are uh, uh, going to do everything humanly possible to search that rubble. Well, I'm recalling the terrible events when the federal building in Oklahoma City sure. was, in effect, destroyed. It took days, and there were days, in fact, when uh, people sniffing dogs, it's not an eloquent phrase, were brought into play. Is that, that scene, it seems to me, is very likely to be played on a, great, a greater scale in oh, the days a, to come. A, a, a much greater scale. Uh, when you've got, uh, it, it took days and, and weeks to get through the, uh, the Mura building, you've now got... Good afternoon, I'm Carolyn Donaldson. Welcome back to the 10 News Studio where we're continuing to bring you live coverage and breaking news coverage of the local and regional effect of this attack on America. We heard from President Bush there just moments ago who said freedom will be defended. And to that end, uh, we are going now live to our Skylink 10, the site of one of the plane crashes right in our region, Flight 93, United Flight 93, traveling from Newark to San Francisco, went down early this morning. Chuck Farrell, Patrick Schur joins us with the very latest information. Gentlemen. All right, thanks, Carolyn. Uh, we are in front of it. Back over that tree line is about where the crash happened shortly after 10 this morning, Patrick. Yeah, right about that. <clears throat> the state police held a news conference a few uh, minutes ago just to tell us that, well, they don't have much to tell us in addition to what they've said before, but there will be a news conference later on between the uh, FBI, the Pennsylvania State Police, FEMA, all the folks that are here. A couple of the people that were at the press conference, reporters asked, can you describe the scene to us? And they're being very very cautious about what they say. They wouldn't even go as far as to describe what happened back there. But Patrick, you did get a little bit closer than what we have so far. Right. And we'll show you some pictures of what uh, the scene looks like. 
and actually there's really not much to look at there isn't much to look at chuck it's unbelievable when you see the crater there uh it, it is a crater just above a tree line at the edge of a clearing uh we'll believe it was a reclaimed uh, reclaimed mine site out there and we got there i'd say maybe about an hour after this happened and there wasn't much left there was some smoldering uh action going on there some smoke coming out of this large crater in the ground and that was about it the tree line was singed as you could see in the background there was a lot of burning going on back there apparently there was some debris caught up in the tree line there but we did get a chance to talk to an eyewitness a gentleman was working at the top of the hill there at a scrap heap he saw it all happen here's what he had to say I happened to heard a plane come through it sounded like it was running normal when it come down over top of me I seen it go ahead nose dive straight into the ground down here everything was running fine on the plane it sounded like what it, what was its position as it went towards the ground? It was, it was just coming down like it was going to land but instead of landing it just went nose straight into the ground as you can hear from the eyewitness there, there didn't appear to be any indications of problems on board, uh, at least from what he could see. He said it just kind of came across the top of the ridge there, and then, as he described, nose dived into the ground. It left that crater, very little debris. You can't see any large chunks of debris up there, no tail, no nose, no wings, nothing. From what the witnesses are telling me, tiny bits is all that's left out there. Now, you know, we did get a chance to, uh, to hear from United CEO. I, I believe that uh, we have his statement. He tells us uh, today's events are a tragedy and our prayers are with everyone at this time. Now, United has also set up a phone number, Chuck, and this is for friends and family to call and check on the information on these two flights. The flight, of course, that crashed out here uh, in Somerset County and another flight that crashed elsewhere in the country. They're not saying where that was, but we believe that was the World Trade Center crash. The phone number there is 1-800-932-8555. You can also check their website. It's www united.com. Let's take a step back for a second. The witness didn't see that there was any trouble on the aircraft, but we do know there was trouble on the plane. A passenger with a cell phone, apparently from either a bathroom or whatever, made a call and said the plane was being hijacked. Yeah, that's right. I guess they called the 911 center. It got through to Westmoreland, County, Pennsylvania, where Pittsburgh's located. The 911 center says that the person was telling them we're being hijacked. Oh my God, what should we do? Then they hear an explosion in the background. Apparently the cell phone goes dead at that point, and I guess they lose communications with the plane, and the end result, uh, tragically, is this crater out here uh, in the minefield out here in, in Somerset County. Well, we do know again United Flight 93 en route from Newark to San Francisco this morning. 38 passengers on board and a crew of seven, two pilots and five flight attendants. Uh, it crashed shortly after mm, 10 o'clock this morning. Not, we're about what would you guys say? About 10 miles as a crow flies from the Cambria yeah. County Airport. Yeah. Uh, there had been maybe 20. It, okay. it would be the Somerset County Sun Airport, Somerset I believe, County. Chuck. Yeah, the, down here. The, the, we're about 10 miles, I think, from the Somerset County Airport, just north of Indian Lake, I believe, is where we're located here. Right, but what I was getting at is that there were some. There was some speculation early that he might have been trying to make right. the Cambria right. County Airport yes. yeah. to make a landing uh, before. It crashed here in Stony Creek Township. Yeah, we're, we're hearing that the plane came in from the west, and, and if you look at the direction, I believe this is the west out here, and he came on an angle like this, and right behind this tree line is where the crash site is at. So if he was coming from Newark, clearly he would have been coming from the east and not the west. So he must have made some sort of loop, but what attempts he was trying to make, we don't know. All right, Patrick, sure. Well, uh, Carolyn, we'll keep you informed of what's going on out here as... Officials start to talk, and they're mm -hmm. being very tight-lipped. We'll bring it to you. Okay, Chuck, I'm logging on to the United website and seeing that toll-free number and that message from the CEO. So we'll wait to hear the very latest from United and, of course, as that investigation continues. Thank you, guys. Uh, we also want to pass along, of course, all air travel has been grounded throughout the nation. Any international flights into the country, of course, have been diverted to Canada. And now the terroristic attacks have disrupted ground travel by bus. Greyhound has halted all bus service throughout the East Coast. Greyhound buses have stopped. They will not be transporting their uh, their uh, passengers through their system today due to these efforts. And also the national parks from Virginia to Maine are closed today because of the federal emergency that's been declared. Attack on America continues. And when we talk about the scope of this tragedy and we look at the damage there in Somerset County, we see firsthand how it is influencing our area. There are people involved. There are people that you may know that worked in New York or worked um, perhaps uh, in one of the other areas that have been hit or we do not know who was on the planes yet. But we go live now up to the news where Emily Longnecker joins us with the story of a woman who knows firsthand what it feels like to see that tragedy and know someone inside the World Trade Center. Emily. 
Carolyn, Altoona resident Janet Schmidl has a 22-year-old son, John, who works in the World Trade Center. And for two hours this morning, Schmidl did not know her son's fate. According to Schmidl, her son John had just started a job with Morgan Stanley's Human Resources Department. He was working on the 44th floor of the World Trade Center when the first plane hit. Schmidl's son finally called her around 10.30 this morning to tell his mother he was okay. They heard the, it what sounded like an explosion and everyone evacuated down the stairs, 44 flights of stairs and with each progressing flight of steps it gets a little more crowded because you're adding to the number of people going down the stairs. The stairs were moving a lot, he said, not just shaking but actually moving as he went down and when he hit the door he just kept on running. He said it's very difficult um, to walk or run even as far as the Brooklyn Bridge. The smoke was very thick and you can feel it in your lungs, he said. Now, Mrs. Schmidl tells me that her son came out of the building and ran four miles to his home in Brooklyn. He was actually running across the Brooklyn Bridge on foot, turned to see the, uh, one of the uh, buildings at the World Trade Center collapse. But again, Mrs. Schmidl, very thankful uh, today that her son is alive. Carolyn, back to you. Oh, unbelievable story, and we're going to hear a lot more, unfortunately. Thank you, Emily. Thank you for that. A personal story again of how we are seeing this uh, tragedy unflow, unfold and affect, of course, people right here in our region. Uh, let me pass on for those who don't already know things that you can do if you if you are not personally affected. One of the best things you can do is perhaps uh, give blood. Uh, many, many, uh, much is going to be needed and uh, blood banks are being set up. We'll try to get you information. But again, the American Red Cross is sending out just a blanket invitation for those folks who can. We have prayer services that we'll get to in just a minute. We'll talk about there's another way that you may be able to uh, to assist in this tragedy. Right now, let's go back to Jerry Gish. He is live at the Altoona Post Office, which earlier had a suspicious package that was being investigated, may or may not be related to the other events of the day. Jerry, bring us up to speed with what's happening now. Well, Carolyn, on a day that has been very, very short of good news, we do have some good news out of Altoona today. The bomb scare here is over. Now, the bomb squad arrived about 20 minutes ago here. Um, and, and kind of gathered forces over at a truck uh, about 30 or 40 yards away from the car that had been handling the bomb here. To bring you up to date very quickly, there was a mysterious package that was tried to be mailed out of the post office today. There was concern raised about this package for various reasons, including um, the suspicious act actions of the folks, uh, who, of the person who tried to mail this package, and also the weight of the package and where it was headed, which is the Republic of Georgia over in the former Soviet Republic. So this package was brought outside into a car outside of the post office. The bomb squad arrived today. Um, obviously